going down. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second EP of the Clear Vision Podcast. Yo, I am uh I am super excited for this pod. I'm super excited for what he's gonna do in this pod. I am uh blessed to be doing this pod with you. And I pray that wherever you are, man, the Lord is, uh, his hand is on you and he's touching you <clears throat> wherever you are, man. And he's encouraging you and lifting you up wherever you may be. Um, today's, uh, <laughs> today's pod, man, there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of tear shed maybe from my end. Um, maybe not necessarily from yours, but. From mine, I know uh, for a fact that I might be shedding some tears, man. This is uh this is a topic that just got impressed on me. Well, well, first before I before I say that, <laughs> let, me, let me talk about why. Let me start with why I haven't made a po- I didn't make a podcast last week. Um, because I was preparing for this one. I think this podcast is uh this one is gonna challenge you. Um, I had to come in with a mindset that uh, I'm not playing around in this podcast. Um, this one is very serious. It's very real. Um, and, uh, I'm going to do my best to communicate it. I may not be as effective as I'm, I, I don't know. I'm just coming to the table with this topic, um, and just seeing where it goes, you know, and, uh, this one is going to be very, I, I I don't know how long this podcast is going to be. It could be as short as 15 minutes. It could be as long as 45 minutes. I don't know. I, 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 I'm just going <laughs> as, you know, and the Lord just take it wherever he's going to take it. Um, But I was preparing for this one, though. And I think that uh, this one's going to touch a lot of people's lives and um, whoever's going to watch it. And I think that this is going to be beneficial to you to your current situation and uh because i know it's it's impacting mine daily <laughs> i mean i don't go a moment really without hearing this question and uh so let me start with the topic and then we'll and i'll pray it in and then we'll go from there um the lord kind of asked me this question um it was like maybe two weeks ago from now, it was like right after I got done with the first EP, like maybe somewhere in that time for a couple days after that, maybe somewhere around there. I forgot the exact day. Um, and he asked me this question and like the, the way, the, the way that he asked me this question, it was like, it was, there was love behind it. But it was so powerful. I didn't know how to answer it in the moment. And I still don't know how to answer it in the moment. Other than no. <laughs> like, like other than just a flat out no. Like, I'm not doing this. And um, he, like, sparked something in me to, like, want to do this now. And so <clears throat> I'm going to ask you the question the way that he asked me the question. And it was to the effect of like, son, are you living holy? <laughs> I said, I said, whoa, like I get chills in my spirit when he asked me that question. Every time I hear the word holy, it's just like, dude, there's a certain feeling you get in your spirit. Like, bro, you're not living that way. <laughs> like. You are not living holy, and it's very hard to do without Jesus. <laughs> and so he popped that question in 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 my spirit, like, and I was I I was like just blown away with the way he asked me that because he asked it to me with so much love and so much care. But at the same time, he asked this to me with so much conviction and so much power behind that question. 
I didn't know what to say in the moment. I didn't know how to answer it. <laughs> and so I'm going to ask you the same question. And that is the topic of today's podcast is son, daughter, are you living holy? <laughs> Woo! This is going to be one for the books, y'all. Let me just <clears throat> define real quick. Let me just define, in my opinion, what being holy means. There's a, there, I have a couple definitions of it, and you can agree or disagree, whatever. These are definitions that came to me, and you, and whatever you gonna do with it, you do with it. But the first one is being set apart, dedicating yourself to God for God alone. That's what being holy means to me. The second one is sacrifice. The sacrifice. That means you cannot get drunk and live holy. You can't watch pornography and live holy. You can't be a glutton and live holy. Being a glutton, for those of y'all that don't know, means eating too much food. And live holy. You can't smoke weed and live holy. You've got to sacrifice to live holy. You've got to put your flesh on the cross daily to live holy. You've got to sacrifice the things your flesh wants to do and pick up the things that God wants to do. <sighs> Let's pray. 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 This is this is this this is gonna be heavy. Lord, I just pray that you help us to understand what living holy means. I pray that you help us to understand that we must separate ourselves for you. Not based on competition, not based on ambition, but based on who you are alone. We separate ourselves to live holy. We present our bodies as a holy sacrifice. And we should be holy because you are holy. And in this time and in this era, Lord, you're calling us to live holy. I pray, Lord, for the unbeliever that listens to this pod as well. I pray that you help them to understand what living holy means and call them to you. It's in your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to start with a scripture. And the first scripture is Leviticus 20, uh, verse 7 and 8. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. And it says, so set yourselves apart to be holy, for I am the Lord your God. Verse 8, keep all of my decrees by putting them into practice for I the Lord for I am the Lord who makes you holy live holy because he is holy and that's my first point is to live holy because he is holy you know when i think about that the first thing that pops into my mind is doing the things of god not just to do them for tradition but to do them because he's calling you to do them. He's calling you to keep his commands sacred. He's calling you to love your enemies and to pray for them. It's not just the sin. It's the other things that God has called you to do to live holy. It's to present your bodies as a holy sacrifice to him, as we see in Romans 12, 1 and 2, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. 
I'm going to stop right there and we'll get to the second verse in a little bit. But he's asking you to present your body to him as a holy and living sacrifice. What that means is you cannot pollute your body with the things of this world. You cannot pollute your spirit with the things, your spirit and your soul with the things of this world. You must set yourself apart from everything that this world has to offer. And to be honest with you, everything that the world has to offer is selfish. If you think about it, watching pornography is a selfish thing. Even though you may be social drinking, getting drunk every day, that is a selfish thing. You are poisoning and tainting your body. And more importantly, the spirit that God placed on the inside of you, you're tainting it with the things of this world when he's called you to live holy and he's called you to live set apart for him. So what like what what is being holy? What 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 is it? For something to be holy simply means for it to be dedicated to God. You are holy to the extent that your life is devoted to him and your actions reflect his character. Holiness and wholeness are closely related and God wants the whole of your life. He just doesn't want a part of you. He doesn't want a half of you or three fourths of you or seven eighths of you. He wants the whole of you. He wants your day to revolve around him. What does that mean? You've got to stop pursuing things that don't matter to him. <laughs> And this this rocked me. You've got to stop pursuing things that have nothing to do with him. He wants you, for those of us that are saved, to push his kingdom forward, to spread the truth of his word. And we can't do that if we're not being set apart. And living holy. And the second part of my definition was sacrifice. And that brings me to the second part of Romans 12. Now we're going into verse 2. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. What does that mean? Sacrifice. You can't be in the world and still live holy. Now you've got to separate yourself. Now that you've came into the kingdom, for those of us that are new believers or you're thinking of you're on the fence or whatever, once you come into the kingdom, you now have to live set apart. You now have to sacrifice. You now have to give up some things to live holy. And I said a couple of them earlier. And the other one that just popped in my head that I'm just going to say, you've got to hate sin to live holy. And it's very hard to do because sin is so enticing. It's quick. It's like add water and stir. It's, it's, it's quick. It's a, it's a quick work. <laughs> sin is a quick work. <laughs> Sin will come in and leave faster than you think. But you've got to deny your flesh. You've got to deny yourself. Take up your cross, sacrifice, and follow him daily. This is what he's calling us to do in this day and age. He's calling us to live holy. He's calling us to set ourselves apart. Again, not for competition, not for ambition, but separate ourselves unto him for he is worthy of it. He is worthy of everything that we can give. And if he's worthy of everything, we should be giving him everything. It shouldn't just be half of us we're giving him. The parts of us we just want him to have and that's it. He wants us to live holy 
for he is holy. And that brings me to my next verse. I got some word for you today. That brings me to my next verse. In 1 Peter 1, 13 through 20. So prepare your minds and actions for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. He's talking right to me. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, and we just read it in Leviticus, you must be holy because I am holy. And remember that the heavenly father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear Fear is like respect, adoration right there. It's not fear. It's, oh, my gosh, I got to be scared of you. To live in reverence, reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. So he's already telling you it wasn't paid with something that's temporary. I'm not. (laughs) Okay. I'm not calling you to a temporary lifestyle. I'm calling you to eternal holiness. I'm now calling you to live separate. I'm calling you to be separate from everything and everybody else. Why? For my namesake. (laughs) I'm calling you to bring me glory on this earth. Are you going to get persecuted? Of course you are. Are you going to get ridiculed? Are you going to lose some friends living holy? Of course you are. God is calling you to be set apart. Of course you are. You're going to lose friends. You're going to lose people that you once used to dap up. That you once used to call your boy, you used to call him twin and them. You're going to lose them. But it's worth it. If you lose them, they weren't for you anyway. God is calling you to eternal holiness. And that on this earth is worth it. There's no amount of money. There's no amount of silver, gold, none of that. That's worth you giving up eternal holiness. No amount. I would not take in any amount of money over living holy. He's calling you to live holy. Verse 19, it was the precious blood of Christ. Amen. The sinless, spotless lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. Again, verse 17. And remember that the heavenly father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. You know why you're here? To spread the gospel. To live holy, for he is holy. To be the light to somebody that needs it. That's why you're here. And you can't do that tied up in worldly things. You must break loose and set yourself apart for him. My last verse. Actually, I got two more. But we'll break this down. Ephesians 4, 23 through 30. Instead, let your spirit renew, or excuse me, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, 
created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. There's our word again. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all part of parts of the same body. And don't and don't sin by letting anger control you. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good hard work and then give generously to others in need. Do not don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Let's go back to verse 30. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. The worst thing in this life to me is bringing God sorrow by the way I'm living. I want him to look at me and be pleased rather than look at me and be in sorrow, be sad. That I'm still tied up in other things instead of worrying about the word of God Almighty and living holy. I can't live like that anymore. That question, are you living holy? challenged me to live in a different way. I can't do the things I used to do now. I, I've got to live holy. I can't pursue that anymore. I've got to live holy. I can't get tied up in the stuff I'm tied up in because I've got to live holy. I've got to be separate for his glory alone. Man. Last verse. Last verse. First Thessalonians 4, 1 through 8. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of our Lord Jesus to live in a way that is ple- that pleases God as we have taught you. Stop right there. We we we've heard that through every verse we've read. <laughs> what is on God's mind for you to live? holy for you to live separate that's what he cares clearly he cares that you live holy so you can bring others to the kingdom of god that's what he cares about you've got to start though you've got to be the one to live holy you've got to be the one to live separate so next time you think about picking up that picking up that blunt you're going to put it down Next time the thought, the temptation even comes to your mind about drinking, you're not going to pick it up. You're laying in your bed at night and pornography is a click away. You're going to put your phone in the other room. Because being holy is what he's called us to. He's called us to live holy. You live this way. And we encourage you to do so even more. Verse two, for you remember what we taught you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. God's will for you, God's will is to is for you to be holy. So stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion. Verse five, like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. Never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this matter by violating his wife. For the Lord avenges all such sins, as we solemnly warned you before. God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. That was verse 7. Verse 8. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. 
I'm going to read that again. And then I'm done attacking you. <laughs> Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. What do we see throughout all these verses? What do we see? God cares about you living holy. He's called you to a life of sacrifice. And in order to do that, guess what you got to do? Your flesh can't win. You've got to deny yourself. And that's got to be a daily thing. Are we perfect? No. Are we going to mess up? Of course. But the basis on which we live our lives is to be holy. And is to be set apart for him. No longer are we chasing worldly things. <laughs> I can't. I don't have time for it anymore. I don't have time to chase things which are not holy. Sex outside of marriage, I can't do it. Watching pornography, I can't do it no more. Drinking, can't do it. Smoking, can't do it. Cussing, can't do it. Sending out of anger, can't do it. Can't do it. Why? Who am I representing if I do those things? Which banner am I waving in the air if I do those things? Better question is, who will I bring to the kingdom living that way? How will I bring glory to God's name living that way? I can no longer do it. And so my final question to you is, son or daughter, are you living holy? And if, you, if you're not, what are you willing to sacrifice to live holy? The way that you live is the banner you're waving. I'm going to say that again. The way you live Shows people the banner you're waving. You're posting godly things, but you in the club every uh, every night it opens up. You posting things about God, but your character and your integrity are trash. God's like, I want to use you. But how can I if you're not living holy? I can't put you there in that position without you living holy. You've got to fix that first. You've got to live holy before I can put you where you're supposed to be. Mm, I could go on a tangent right there. <laughs> Whoo, bro. That topic rocked me. It rocked me so much that still to this day, when I think about that question and when I hear it asked in my spirit, I don't, I don't know what to say. I'm at a loss for words. Completely. I don't know what to do half the time when that question pops in my head and in my spirit and in my heart. I don't, I don't know what to do.
No idea. Other than to live holy. <laughs> For he is holy. To start giving things up and putting things to the side. To focus on what really matters. And uh, that's him and his word and living holy. Whew. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I didn't even want to record this. But I had to do it. It would be a disservice if I didn't do it. And I hate that this had to be the second time. I wanted it to be like the third or fourth or fifth, but I had I had to do it now. This is not, again, I'm not, I'm not God. So I, you know, I, I can't judge you. But the word is here to correct you. And I'm just reading what the word is saying and breaking it down to the best of my knowledge. That's 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 all I can do. <laughs> I'm just here to plant a seed or water a seed. And God brings the increase and he grows it. And so um, let's pray and then we'll move on to a <laughs> we'll move on to a much lighter topic. Um yeah, let's just pray. Lord, thank you for the holy life you're calling us to. Thank you, Lord, that you are calling us to be set apart <clears throat> for you and to bring others to you. Lord, I pray for the unbeliever that is listening to this. I pray that you help them recognize the mess that they're in and call them, Lord, to live holy. I pray, Lord, for believers as well, Lord, that are listening to this and that they may be thinking that they're living holy and that. They are far from it. That you call them to yourself. And you help them see, Lord, what living holy looks like. I pray that you bless this word, Lord, as it goes forth. And it's in your name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. <laughs> I have my phone and my Bible open for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even cap to you. I had my phone and my Bible open for that one. Man, that was uh <laughs> Woo. That that topic is something else. Oh man. Um it's so hard to move on from a topic like that. I don't want to end the pod though, because I got I gotta talk about this right here. And um it is the updated playoff bracket for 2024. Um in my personal opinion, let me go to scores real quick. And let me go to the league. I don't know if you guys watched the games that took place on Monday between the 76ers and the Lakers. Those were some amazing games. They, they were some amazing games. And it came down to like the last second in both of those games. Costly turnovers. Um... Things that uh fouls that should have been called, even though you can't you ain't supposed to blame it on the ref. You know what I'm saying? But I, I want to go series by series real quick and just break these down. Just 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 real quick. The Knicks are up 2-0. I kind of expected that. If I'm being honest. Joe Joel Embiid is not playing well because he's obviously has a knee injury. He's not playing well right now. Uh can the 76ers turn it around? I don't think so because Jalen Brunson's about to pop off. <laughs> Jalen Brunson is about to go for – he's about to have his breakout in these next two games. I think the Knicks are going to sweep them. 
That's just me personally. The Knicks are on such a high right now, man. They're playing with a lot of confidence. I got the Knicks in that series. I got the Knicks in that series. Uh, the Magic and Cavs, I got the Cavs sweeping them. <laughs> the Cavs are just too much. They got too much firepower. Their role players and their veterans are playing with a certain level of confidence right now. I just got the Cavs winning that in four. I got the Cavs sweeping them. For all my Lakers fans out there, and you may not like this, but the Nuggets have your number. <laughs> you were playing so well in game two. D'Lo was shooting out of his mind. And then all of a sudden, you just stopped playing basketball. You stopped scoring. Jamal, Mur Jamal Murray is fourth quarter Murray, <laughs> in my opinion. And I think the Nuggets got that in five. I, I, I think they only win one game. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, the Suns and the Timberwolves, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see the Suns beating the Timberwolves. I had the Suns in seven. I'm switching my pick. I got the Timberwolves in five. <laughs> and and Cat are just too much. Rudy Gobert, I guess we're giving him defensive player of the year, even though I don't like Rudy Gobert. Seven one, whatever, however tall he is, for what reason I don't know and I don't understand. But I got the Timberwolves in five. Pacers, Bucks, I got the Pacers in six. I th I think the Pacers are so talented, they might, they they have a potential to beat the Celtics in a seven game series. They got the talent. I, I'm being so for real. They got the talent to beat the Celtics. The Celtics are so inconsistent. The Celtics, in my opinion, Jason Tatum is so spotty. He hasn't been consistent yet, in my opinion. I got the Pacers beating the Bucks right now, though. Uh, Dallas and uh, the Clippers. I got... I, <sighs> I got the Clippers in six, man. I got the Clippers in six, especially now with Kawhi. He's back. I know he ain't. He might not be 100% back, but he's back. I got the Clippers in six. <laughs> Even though they lost last night, I got the Clippers in six, man. I got the Clippers in six. Is there any other series that I'm missing? Oh, yeah. Boston and Heat. Boston's going to sweep the Heat. I mean, what else are we talking about? <laughs> what else are we talking about? Oklahoma City and the Pelicans. I'm going to be honest. I got the, I got the Thunder in six. I, I think the Pelicans could do some things. But I I got the Thunders in six. SGA's playing on a, at a great level right now. It's hard to beat them. With him, Josh Giddy, and Chet, finally, he's coming into his own finally a little bit. I got the Thunder winning that in six. I got the Thunder winning that in six. Uh, is there any other series that I'm missing? I think, yeah, I covered all the series. Nice. Okay, we went over that real quick. Like, um, yeah, man. But this is a very fun playoff to watch, though. I think this is probably one of the best NBA playoffs we've had in a very long time. And so I'm super excited to see where the playoffs go. Um and who comes out of the east and who comes out of the west. L like I said, like I think if the Pacers get past the Knicks, I think they'll beat Boston. Either the Pacers or the Knicks are going to beat Boston. It it's going to be either one. I don't trust the Celtics. I, I I don't. I just don't trust them. For, for whatever reason, I don't trust the Celtics in a seven-game series against either the Pacers or the Knicks. I don't trust them. I just don't. I just don't. If Milwaukee makes it out of this out of the second round, out of the first round, excuse me, I got the Knicks beating them. The Knicks are just a, in my personal opinion, they're just a complete team. With Josh Hart playing his best basketball right now in the playoffs, this is the time you want to be playing your best ball, and he's doing it right now with confidence. Um, so yeah, man, the the the, the anybody could come out of the East in my per except the Heat, <laughs> except the Heat and the Magic, except the Heat and the Magic. Anybody can come out of the East, man. 
anybody can come out of the East. For the West, I either got the Timberwolves or the Nuggets coming out of the West. Maybe the Clippers. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe the Clippers. But yeah, man, that is it for this episode of the Clear Vision Podcast. Appreciate you watching and listening or wherever you may be. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm super excited, man, for this, what's coming up. Stay tuned for episode three. That's going to be a hit. Uh, I'm so excited, man, to be bringing that to y'all. And uh, yeah, man, let's pray this whole episode out. <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Lord, let your hand be on this podcast. I give you this podcast, Lord. Let your hand be on it. I pray that whoever listens to it, Lord, that they, um, Lord, will continue to to watch and to listen and to share with their friends and to, um, I pray that this show helped whoever's going to listen to this. And I pray, Lord, that you just bless it and keep your hand on it. It's in your name. Amen. Amen. And amen. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, for tuning in. Um, and uh, yeah, I will see you guys in episode three. Peace.